in Richmond, Virginia, two Vietnam veterans are waiting for instructions in a hotel. They're here to meet their best friend, the most popular Democrat in the USA at the moment. I don't know, some Virginia elected officials. Max is not here, Max. No, Max is in Georgia. He's coming in tomorrow night. Yeah, you want to come up? I'll find out. Well, thanks. Yeah. Cool. Cool. No, I've been, uh, as Chandler, you may imagine, most chance uh, of competing with George Bush. Around. Around. <laughs> I know, I know. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On his way to Richmond, right. he's already yeah. won the primaries. Seven of nine states have had to face so far. Okay. And I make you this pledge. I have only just begun to fight. But who is the new JFK? We'll talk to his sister, explore his past, look at his meetings with the other JFK, and meet with his comrade in arms from the Vietnam War. 16. It's April 28, 1971. 4.33 in the afternoon, the telephone rings in the White House. The then President Nixon receives a call from an advisor, Charles Colson. He informs Nixon about a charismatic young man who declared himself an anti-Vietnam War apostle. From the records of the Nixon tapes, we now know that the following was spoken. This fellow carried up the hat on last week. Yeah. He's politically ambitious and looking for an issue. Yeah. He came back a hawk and became a dove when he saw the political opportunities. John F. Kerry was a Vietnam veteran himself. Serving as an officer, he received the prestigious Purple Heart. Lieutenant Kerry was shot in the arm, and he was bleeding from his left arm, I think. And uh, uh, we had a cargo net over the bow of the boat. Uh, and uh, once uh, Kerry saw that, that Rasmus was one of the people still in the water, uh, he directed me to go over, and I, I went over to the area where Rasmund was. Rasmund grabbed onto the cargo net, but because of his boots and his uniform, and he could not pull himself up on the boat. Kerry jumped down on the deck and grabbed him with his good arm and pulled him up into the boat so that you know we could get him out of the water and proceed with the rest of the firefight, suppressing fire from the Viet Cong, etc. And for that, he got a bronze star and another purple heart. I found it hard that John was going to Vietnam. Um, I was so against the war, as was most of my family. Um, but he really felt that he needed to, to serve his country. And he wrote letters in great depth about what was going on. And there came a point where he found it difficult to be there, where he felt that the Vietnamese didn't really even know who, who was fighting who. You had these few fire zones where you just shot people indiscriminately without really knowing if they were Viet Cong or, or if they were just trying to carry out their, their daily lives. So I think it became a very painful experience. It's really interesting because the Vietnam veteran that my brother rescued, the one that had suddenly come to, you know, back into John's life, said that he found it was a painful experience. But he said he came back to America and he just didn't have the courage that John had to stand up against the war. Whether you believe in the Vietnam War or not, there were few people in the country who were not moved by a demonstration in Washington four weeks ago by the Vietnam veterans against the war. One young man caught the attention of the nation. His name is John Kerry. He came to national attention in his appearance before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. We are here to ask, and we're here to ask vehemently, where are the leaders of our country? Where is the leadership? Where are they now that we, the men whom they sent off to war, have returned? It took a lot of nerve for him to bump heads with Nixon, to, to take a stand against the establishment. And it, the, our country was divided at the time. A lot of people were hawks and wanted to prolong the war. And Kerry uh, had uh, been instrumental in raising the voice of, of a dove is a better way. It's time to end this, this ridiculous war. It was the start of his political career. He addressed Congress to stop the Vietnam War and became the symbol of the peace movement. Kerry met various icons of the day, 
For example, John Lennon, and earlier, John F. Kennedy. When John was a young high school student, he came down to Boston to go to the dentist, and it was the day before the election where Kennedy was elected. And there was a huge rally going on in Boston where Kennedy had returned to Massachusetts from you know arduous months of campaigning. And John heard him speak, and it really made an impression on him. Later, John dated Jackie's younger sister, half-sister. And John got to go to Newport, and he went sailing with the president, which he, it was an incredible event and um, really made a great impression of him. Have you got any more veterans for Kerry stickers? Uh, I've got a few. Uh, a true Democrat through and through. That's his reputation, averse to ruling opinions and not afraid to challenge the ruling party. Not in the 70s, not now. As public prosecutor, Kerry was one of the team to investigate the Iran-Contra scandal. Back at the hotel, the veterans prepared to meet their friend and candidate. Uh, we are stronger now in the bond than we were then. We're older, wiser, uh, fatter, uh, gray hair. Uh, but uh, we're still a band of brothers. A movement has started which we helped uh, participate in in Iowa and went to New Hampshire and, and uh, then on to Missouri and, and now we're, we're here in Virginia. Um, a lot of people are upset with the present administration. A lot of veterans have, have expressed it to us and uh, a lot of voters also. They've chosen the polls and uh, that's why I'm here. Hello, Virginia. Neighbors, what would you like to see your brother accomplish if he were to become president? I'd like to see America be liked in the world again. I'd like to see us do a lot of good in the world. I'd like to see us fight AIDS in Africa. I'd like to see us help a lot of countries that I think uh, need a good deal of help um, to, to escape from poverty. I think he, he intends to, to go to the UN and work with the other 190 countries and really make America strong and important and loved again, which is, I think is very important. I am proud, I'm very proud to introduce to you my friend and our next president, John Kerry. I was an only child after Vietnam. I had five brothers. I, uh, uh, I count John Kerry as a friend. I can call him John. Uh, next year, I'll have to call him Mr. President. 